Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question answer program, uh, where you, the radio listeners, any point in time during this broadcast, uh, you may pick up your phones, dial 281-837-2222, if you have any Bible questions you'd like to ask, comments reasonable that you'd like to make, uh, we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all your Bible questions and reasonable comments, and uh, we'll also uh, give you an opportunity to make uh, uh, opportunity for you to make any other thoughts you'd like to bring a, about as well, even if it doesn't pertain to our subject. Okay, I'm going to read into our hearing. I'm going to begin at verse 19. I'm going to read down to verse 31, uh, Romans chapter 3, 19 through 31, and we're going to deal with the subject, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned mm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul writes to these saints in Rome, beginning at verse 19 of chapter 3. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past and through forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. Mm -hmm. By what law? Of works? No, but the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing there is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we have then, or do we then, make void the law through faith? Paul says, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. I'm ready to you here in Romans 3, 19 through 31. And again, I want you to know that our subject matter is all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Now, if you got any questions, comments you'd like to make, again, the number 281-837-2222 at this time, I will I'll hand it over to Brother Javier Frias to elaborate on the subject. Brother Javier. Man, God bless you, God God bless you Brother, uh, Brother Henry. Good to be back as well. You know, Amen. this subject where Brother Henry mentioned in Romans 3, 13, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ, he has never sinned. What God did was place our sins upon his flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to describe Amen. the difference between God the Father and God the Son. If you look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 1, looking at verse 3, actually verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. God appointed his Son heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty uh, on high. So here it says that Jesus Christ is the brightness of his glory. Now, the son has a different glory than the father. And the angels also, if you read verse number four, have a different glory. It doesn't say that they sin. It says being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, why don't the angels have the same glory as the son or the father? Because they were made, look what it says, Jesus was made so much better than they were. Amen. It says in verse number, number five, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who maketh this angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Now, I wanted to read that because when it comes to glory, when it comes to glory, we are justified. We are sanctified by his son. 
we are justified by his image that we get through the New Testament that we obey. When we are born again of water and spirit, we get his Holy Spirit. And afterward, when we read his new covenant who and what he died for, then we are made into his... Look at Ephesians chapter number 4 just to get a, a viewpoint of how we're made into that image so we can receive the glory of his image upon us. And it comes from him. Amen. And this is what he wants. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, look at verse 11. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Who did that? Jesus Christ. But in verse number 10, it says he descended. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all, the, all heavens that he might fill all things. He's in heaven filling all things. Amen. Now, he gave prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Look what he did this for. In heaven to fill all things. In the church. For the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is what God wants. This is what Jesus wants. For us to have the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now we have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus never sinned. That's right. The Father never sinned. But still, Jesus will never have the glory of the Father. Amen. As we read in Hebrews chapter number 1, it says he's the brightness of his glory. And when it comes to us as human beings who have sinned, we can have his glory by verse 13, Ephesians 4, 13, by him giving us and filling us up with the measure of the stature of how Christ is, how he talks, how he lives. Why does he want this? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro mm -hmm. and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait uh, to deceive. Now, when it comes to statements that are made concerning holiness, holier than thou, you know, the Bible does say that David was a, he was a better man than Saul. It does say in Job chapter number one, he's a perfect man, upright, mm -hmm. excuse the evil. There was nobody like him in the whole world. And so holiness is brought forth, and we're made that by the Holy Spirit. That's right. The Holy Spirit is given to us for us to be made holy. And there are men in the Bible and women that are better than others. Mm -hmm. It says that in Job chapter one, where it describes David and Saul. And so when it comes to Acts Chapter 17, and I'll show you, and this is the New Testament as well, Acts 17, looking at verse 11. It says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. It says that they were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They were more noble in Berea than those in Thessalonica. This is what the Holy Spirit is writing down. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to God's desire, God's desire... 1 Corinthians 1.10, that we be of the same mind, same judgment, same way of thinking, same way of speaking. The more that one studies, the more that one fears God and mm -hmm. loves God, It as time goes by, the more that they do that, that they love God and fear God, Jesus Christ, with his Holy Spirit, gives and fills in the church the things that give that person or that congregation, the measure of the stature of Christ. It makes them holy through the Holy Spirit. It gives them the glory of God, how His image is inside of their heart, because they start speaking like Christ, thinking like Christ. Mm -hmm. And concerning many who go against this image, you're going against God's plan and Christ's plan, because that is His plan, mm -hmm. to fill His church with the image of His Son. But even though... We do everything that God has commanded us. We still have sinned. That is the truth. But past tense is not future tense. And there will be some that go to heaven when Jesus returns. And there will be some that go to hell when Jesus returns. My question is, if there will be some, according to the scriptures, that will die lost. Because the Bible does say 
Some will die lost, and some will die saved. Many will actually die lost. Then why do those who go to heaven, why do they go to heaven if they've sinned? Because they've been justified, sanctified, made into the image uh, of his son. And this is what God wants for all souls to be cleansed, to be a, a prepared people. But there's many that do not like that image. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Looking at verse number 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another fi fishes, another birds. Mm -hmm. There are also celestial bodies, bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. How does it differ? Distance. One is farther away. You can barely see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so also is the res resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. When those who resurrect in the future, when Jesus returns, they will get a spiritual body that lives forever in heaven. That is going to be a different glory of how they look like now. It is going to be a different kind of splendor that God gives them, as John mentions, when it comes to we'll have a body like him, Amen. like his but glorious body. And this is what God desires. And then there will be some that will be cast into the lake of fire. These, this is the truth of the scriptures. That's why we forewarn men and warn men of the scriptures Concerning the truth. We desire that all men obey the gospel. Be born again of water and spirit. As Jesus mentioned. John 3. 5. 3 through 8. That you have that same image. That you be made and renewed. Be made a new creature. And continue to carry your cross until death as Jesus commanded. So you can get that promise of a new body. That you can be a prepared people. Mm -hmm. That you can be received by Jesus Christ on that day. Because we will all sit at the judgment seat of Christ, not of Joseph Smith, mm. and God desires this for you. We have a call on the line. We want to take that call while we have. Go ahead, call you on the air. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, why is the subject now today about the crucifixion? Y'all uh, don't believe in the crucifixion? Of course we do. Yes, we do. First Corinthians chapter 15, we speak of these scriptures many times. For I delivered unto you yeah, first. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this Palm Sunday when everybody listening. Because of what the day means or what the, what the word of the Catholic Church means. What it says about the crucifixion and Palm Sunday. We know that Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus Christ died. I know that, but you know, I'm not saying nothing about it today. You went on somewhere in left field. What uh, church do you go to, sir? What church do you go to? Do you remember... Do you think about the crucifixion or his resurrection on the first day of the week? Because some Baptists only think about it once a month. Some think about it once a year. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11 tells us to remember tells us to remember his death, burial, resurrection, what he died for on the cross. But when it comes to what you want us to talk about, if you have a question, we'll answer it. But even the Bible talks about children in the marketplace that uh, whatever you, whatever they say to sing about or whatever they uh, have emotions about, they want you to feel the same emotions. What we do is we talk about the subjects that come up, and that's what we talk about. Now, if you have a question of his death, burial, resurrection... Concerning the scriptures, we can take you to First Corinthians chapter eleven. We remember his crucifixion, according to the scriptures. We remember his death as well. Say that again. Why you don't do it on the holiday today? Instead of talking about something else, but that's all right. I appreciate you, man. I'm just curious. We talk about his crucifixion every time we preach. Yeah, the crucifixion. And they have those two things up there. 
When it comes to his, but the time frame, the time frame that you want us to talk about it, sir, is not going to be on your time frame. So, so here's what we do every Sunday. We talk about his death, burial, resurrection every Sunday. Now, when it comes to how and what time frame you desire that we speak on it, we're not going to do it on your time frame, sir. We're going to do it when it comes up as we're going through the scriptures. So when it comes to what happened on the cross, because I don't know what church he goes to, but when Acts chapter 20, 28, and I want to hear what he says about this, young up. When it comes to Acts 20, 28, he purchased a church with his own blood. Now, I want to know what church he goes to, because in the Bible, it says that there's one body, one Lord, one faith. Amen. So that church that you hear on the radio is the church of Christ. That is the church Amen. that he purchased with his own blood on that cross. Since you want to talk about his nails, his hands. And that's, see, the power that, that happened on the cross was our sins were placed upon his flesh. He purchased the church with his own blood. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, he also did away with the Old Testament. Looking at verse 15, Hebrews 9, 15. Because you can talk about the nails going in his flesh, which is in the scriptures. In his hands and his feet, mm -hmm. the crown on his head. Verse 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also necessity be the death of the testator, for a testament is a force, after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all, why the testator live it. Now, he died on the cross, sir. Did you know that he died for that one body? He said, on this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Acts 20, 28 says he died for that church. Now, my question to you is, if you could call back, do you go to that church that he died for? Amen. Do you go to the church that Jesus Christ died for? Or do you go to a man-made location that was made by man in the 1500s, the uh, 606 AD, in Holland, in Germany, in America, do you go to the one that he died for? Since we want to bring up the cross, let's bring up the cross. Amen. And now let's bring up you and ask, have you been born again of water spirit in that church that Jesus died for? Number to call is 281-827-2222. Please call back. Thank you, Brother Javier. I think the individual that called in, his dilemma is he's looking at the calendar, uh, March the 24th. And if you look at your calendar, it says Palm Sunday. His question would be no different than if it was Thanksgiving. Why aren't y'all talking about Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what Javier is explaining to you, sir, is that we just gonna we we're, we're gonna talk about the things that are prevalent, you know, for our thoughts and 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 for the issues that we may be pointing out, and not preaching according to the traditions of this world. You have to understand Amen. that. In Colossians two eight, Paul said, "Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit." After the tradition of men. You see that, sir? Tradition of men. We are thankful every day. We might get in on here in January to talk about Thanksgiving. You see what I'm saying? Right. We don't have, just because it's Thanksgiving Day doesn't mean we have to talk about Thanksgiving. You say it's a good time uh, because that's what the calendar said. But the calendar doesn't dictate, sir, what we talk about, what we preach about. We preach things that are just relevant. And so just because you say, this is what you said. I want you to listen to yourself. This would be a good time to talk about Christ on the cross because the calendar said so. But the question Javier is asking you and dealing with it, okay, you knew before March 24, 2024, that Jesus died on the cross. Now, have you obeyed what Jesus said you need to obey because he died on the cross? Mm -hmm. See, because it's more than just Jesus dying on the cross. His dying on the cross isn't the final move that God made. Uh, there was another move made by God that he was buried. On the third day, he rose. He walked the earth for 40 days. And then he sends his apostles out in the world and say, go preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized should be saved. Now, sir, have you obeyed that? See, you want to talk about just the cross, and many want to hear just about the cross. On Christmas, they want to hear about the baby in the manger, you know, things like that. But it's more than the baby in the manger. It's more than just Jesus dying on the cross. There are some facts that you and I must obey because of what Jesus did for us in, in the final, in the totality of his life here on this earth. Amen. He came to hang on the cross for our sins. As Javier said, his sin, our sins was placed in his flesh. He was buried on the third day he rose. Now, sir, what church do you go to? That's the question. Now, because Jesus died on the cross, have you done what you need to do in order to receive the spirit of Christ? Amen. And so we can talk about the cross and what Jesus did, Palm Sunday, Hosanna, riding in Jerusalem on a donkey. That doesn't save anybody. I'll make sure you get that. 
That doesn't save anybody. You have to obey the gospel, the fact of why he did what he did. 281-837-2222. Brother Ozan. Amen. I have a call online. Go ahead, caller. You're on yes, the air. Sir. Go ahead, caller. How are you doing? My name is Robert Gerald Vine. I go to His Way Baptist Church. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. And I'm going to say it just like you said. Okay. And I told the sister that uh, allowed me to thank God for the thank Paul Sunday. Uh -huh. I'm a believer, okay? And I know one thing. It's about what he did for me when I was in my midst. Uh huh. Okay. Amen. And 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 let me tell you, I was knee deep in. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that God existed because I was born in God fearing family. Okay. Okay. And, and so you know, it's like this here. If you've been somewhere, mm -hmm. I, I ain't talking about down and out. And today, and I know it was God. I am seventy-two years old. I've been mm -hmm. three schools and two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. And, and, you know, I didn't get here this age by myself. Mm -hmm, right. You know, and, and I'm still here. Yeah, man. And, and so, you know. Let me ask you something, sir. Yeah, and God bless. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay. I will be with you even until the end of the earth. This Christian way that we run it is not given unto the script. It's given unto those who endure unto the end mm -hmm. and obedience. Okay, sir. So let me ask you something. Right. So let me ask you something, sir, before you hang up. And God, you are exactly right. God calls the rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. You're 72 right. years of age because of the grace of Almighty God. That's anybody. But you know that would even apply to the atheists. Do you believe that? That God calls it the rain on the atheists? Yes. Okay, so all right. So now, but but here we go. Listen to me, sir. So, so, Amen, sir. You're exactly right. So you're exactly right. Okay. Okay, but yeah, that'll be too late, right? But that'll be too late. Right, but sir, that'll be too late. Sir. And don't just get in to get on the radio. Mm -hmm. Have some quiet time, like uh, maybe three, right. four o'clock yeah. in the morning when you wake yeah. up. Yeah. Say thank you, Jesus. Well, you can say, but that's see, that's you communicating with God. But remember, God communicates with us through the Word, sir. Right? And so yes, you're right. You need to be in praying. Also communicate with us through prayer. Okay, no, well, that is prayer. When you communicate with God, that is prayer. You're talking to God, but God communicates you to you and I when we open up this book. All right, so now let me ask you a question. Amen. So we agree. So, so sir, let me ask you a question, sir. Now, now, Paul, the apostle who wrote the majority of the New Testament, had the same kind of zeal that you have. Praise God. He had a zeal for God. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, yeah. There you go, sir. Amen. So let me ask you something. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something, sir. I know how to be content when mm -hmm. I have nothing, and I know how to be content mm -hmm. when I have luck. Because it, all in all, if it had not been for God sending his son Jesus to come in the flesh mm -hmm. and die for my sins and See, my soul okay. To the okay, my sir. Soul we only have a few minutes, and I'm gonna, I'm trying to respect your your age, sir. Sir, we only have a few, sir. We only have a few minutes, sir. We have a few minutes, and God bless you. You're you're older now. No, no, stay on the line. No, stay on the line. Stay on the line. Stay on the line. Because I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. Uh, you're 72 years old now. Let me ask you something. Now, the Apostle Paul, as we already mentioned, had a zeal for God. Uh, uh, and everything he did, when I look in Acts 23 and verse 1, and Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience, he says, before God until this day. And so Paul was persecuting the Christians uh, with a clear conscience. Now, you agree that he wrote the majority of the New Testament. Let me ask you something. How did, how did, was, how did Paul become a Christian and receive the Spirit of God? He came, well, first of all, it's got to be a quick answer because we're almost out of time. Of the early church. Huh? First of all, Paul was a persecutor of the Amen. So how did he become a part of the church? Paul was a Hebrew and a Pharisee. Okay, but how did he become a Christian, sir? How did he become a Christian? Yeah, that's the question. He became a Christian because something which was the Holy Spirit, Jesus said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute uh -huh. him? See, you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. No, okay, but how did he receive the Spirit? That was Jesus talking to him, sir. But how did he receive the Holy Spirit? Through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, how did Paul, Saul, receive the Holy Spirit? Through the Holy Spirit. 
How did he receive him? When he was on his way to persecute, what I thought you were going to say. He heard something. On the road to Damascus. That's what he was saying? On the road to Damascus? That's what? That's right. Okay, now let's see what he says. Okay, sir, we got to read our answer on this program. So the only reason I'm, talk, I'm bringing these questions up, because it's more than that Jesus died on the cross. And listen let Paul tell you how he became a Christian. Look at Acts 22. This is Paul talking. He's talking about his own conversion, sir. And you have to become a Christian just like Paul had to become a Christian. And and, Paul, and there is no Baptist church. Before, in case we get cut off, I'm going to just say this with all love in my heart. There is no New Way Baptist Church in the Bible. Now, let's start with this. Acts 22, let, this is how Paul said he became a Christian. And in and, uh, and verse number, verse number uh, 11, Acts 22, And when I could not see for the glory of that light being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. The light he saw was Jesus. Javier was bringing out Jesus, the glory, the image of the Father. That is the light, the glory. The closer you get to Jesus, the closer you get to God. Sir, listen to me. Listen, I'm reading the King James too, sir. I'm at Acts 22 and verse 11. That's King James. Now, he saw... Verse 11, 23, right? No, 22, Acts 22. I'm going to slow down. And verse 11. Yes, sir, verse 11. Yeah, but I'm just going to talk fast because we're almost out of time. Now, now he, he, he saw the light. He heard Jesus speaking to him. And that's obvious. As we mentioned, the closer you get to Jesus, the brighter your light will shine, okay? The further you're away from the Lord, the less your light will be shining. Now, he says, in one hand and eyes, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, he says, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. Now, he's, he's, he's already off the road to Damascus. And he said, the God of our fathers, look what God sent a man to him, have chosen you that you should know his will and see that just one and should his hear the voice of his mouth. For you shall be his witness unto all men, Acts twenty two fifteen, of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Now this is what Ananias, Acts twenty two sixteen, sir. And why tarriest thou? This is what he's going to tell him to do. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass when I was coming to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, sir. And so what you have to do, sir, to be saved and receive the Spirit, you got to hear the gospel, believe the gospel, repent of your sins, confess with your mouth that you believe Jesus, Lord, and be baptized by a male member of the Church of Christ, sir. There is no Baptist, Methodist, Catholic Church. Nobody. I know he's still talking, but we're out of time. Uh, my number, personal number is 281-965-4875. Anyone would like to talk to me off here, I'll be more than willing. We lead the faithful saints of God with Romans 16, 16. The Church of Christ salutes you. But that was good, brother. I'm glad you did. But I just wanted to read this uh, from First John, because uh, this is a good lesson. Well, God bless brother Chris. Yeah, you know, amen. sin. This is the whole purpose. Jesus didn't come down here to train us how to be friends. He came with a purpose, a mission. And I don't know right. why people won't accept this. First John chapter three. He says in verse 1, Behold, what man of love the Father that bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. That's what you guys have been talking about. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, yeah. for we shall see him as he is. Now this is this what's going to happen. And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself. Even as he is pure, even as Christ is pure, yes. whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. You, you're going to get annihilated by the law Amen. alone, for sin is the transgression of the law. He said, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Well, friends talking about he never sinned. Amen. Whosoever abide in him sinned not, whosoever sinned have not seen him, neither know him. Now, that's the text, man. You know, we. Man, we cannot yeah. be playing with these means in the yeah. Bible. But yeah. bless his heart. He, if he had just let you talk some more, yeah. man, I wish he would have. It's kind of a story. testimony he was giving. Yeah. This is lovely, oh, but, yeah. man, we need some instructions. Yeah. Some yeah. Story. I'm up in the age. I'm, my life's been in a mess, and God's yeah. got me where I am. And, you know, but he still around. ain't dead. Yeah. Exactly. So you still got something to yeah. do. Amen. It's not over. Yet. By you talking to us, let us know it's not over yeah. yet. You exactly. know, It's not over. Man, God bless you, I hear that age thing a lot, yeah, though. Yeah. I'm 65. I'm saying, mm -hmm. man, it don't matter if you yeah. 
twelve. It doesn't matter. You well, still gonna if you're accountable, you have to know. Yeah, they really Lahu. Lahu. Forgive me. Yeah, thank yeah. you, brother. Yeah. You know, they thought they had it on the age thing. He said. Not what y'all speak, but y'all 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 are very old. Nonsense. Yeah. Everything y'all said a bunch of nonsense. Then he, you know, man, that's wow. You cannot disrespect the person's age. Yeah. Young or old, you have to hear the truth. Yeah. Doesn't matter if the person's young or old. That's right. That's what Elijah said. So I thought mm -hmm. that age would it would burn. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a spirit of man. And God, I said, give him that now. Yeah. And Paul they did. They him, like. You know, let no man despise your youth. I mean, yeah. so that's, I that's, mean, that's exactly. That's, I don't know what it is with the age. You. The young against the old. The old. It's, it's, it, in the church, we listen to the word. We don't know by color. We know no matter what, you Amen. know, Amen. color or age. Right. Yeah, no genealogy yeah. references. You know. Yeah. You know, that's, man, God is good. It was a great program. God bless y'all, man. Bless man, I enjoyed this. My goodness.